Welcome back. Today I am with my Enochanti Spider. In the first video when I got this car running the carburetors were leaking. So let's take care of that today and see if we can get it running off of its own fuel. I think the first thing to do is fill the fuel bowls up with fuel and find out exactly where these carbs are leaking from. This hose is connected up to my fuel bottle. So when I open up the valve, it'll start filling the bowls with fuel. You can hear the fuel going in. Okay, we have a leak over here. Looks like this one is seeping fuel up here. I'll turn the fuel off. On this carb down here, looks like we may have a leak where this hose goes into the bottom of the fuel bowl here. And we definitely, well, the top of this one isn't even tight. So of course it's going to be leaking there. This one here feels tight. And I think it's just a bad gasket right around here. So let's get this hose off and get the tops of these fuel bowls out. With the top of the float bowl removed, you can see the float here. And then right here is the little valve that shuts off and turns off the fuel from filling the bowl any further. So this is going to be sitting there like this. As the fuel level increases, this comes up and shuts that valve off. And there is a little gasket that runs along here. And I think that's what our problem is with this one. So I just noticed another problem. There's actually no fuel in here. This is completely dry. It's not wet at all. So there wasn't even any fuel going into here. So the fuel was coming in one side and it was going straight out the other side over to the other carburetor and it wasn't dropping down into here. So our valve here must be stuck. It looks like it is stuck in the closed position. So while I am replacing this gasket, I'll also be replacing this valve. Oh, just heard a piece fall in when I pulled this out. That'd be the little needle out of our valve there that fell out completely. You can see that this one is all wet with fuel if we look inside of our float bowl there, there's a bunch of fuel in there. I would think that the level would be a lot higher than this, so we probably are leaking fuel from this little hose down here. But let's get the top of this fixed up first, and then we'll retest it. It's kind of hard to see, but right there is our little needle. That has fallen in there. There it is. I also just noticed that on this side, there was no gasket up here at all. So we found a lot of reasons why this one over here should have been leaking. I brought them over to the bench to work on them. I still have a carb rebuild kit left over from last time. So I can get my pieces out of this. Here's my gaskets for here. There's the other one. Here's our jet with a hose on it that I can use on the bottom of that float bowl if it is leaking on that one carb. These do have a little O-ring right here and that's what seals it on the bottom of the float bowl. And here's our new valves. These new ones do have a rubber Viton tip on them. I prefer this style over the gross jets. Although I think the gross jets can handle a higher pressure than these can. First thing I need to do is remove the float. And to do that, this pin here just slides out and it's only going to slide one way. So you have to look at what side is knurled and push it the opposite direction of that.
Now I have access to get the valve out. You could use a wrench to spin this out, but what I like to do is find a really thin wall, 5 16 deep socket. This one is a Craftsman brand, so it has a really thin wall on it, and it actually fits in there and makes it really easy to remove that. When you take it out, you wanna be careful. Sometimes there's little shims here, and that shims up the distance uh, for this valve in order to contact the float. So make sure that you have kept track of the shims that you have in there and put back the same number as what was in there before. As you can see, when I pulled this apart, this one was stuck in the closed position. Before I put my float back on, I'm going to pop this old gasket off of here. Now I can put the new gasket on. Don't forget to put my valve in. And then the float. You want to push this pin in so that it's equally sticking out of both sides and then you know that it will clear the sides of the bowl. It can't fall out because it would end up interfering with the bowl before it can pop out of there. Now I'll do the same thing to this side and we can get them back in and test it again, see if we're gonna need these or not. Now I wanna get this old fuel line out of here and put a new one on. All right, now we have new gaskets, we have new valves, we have new hose on. All the places that I think could have been leaking from up here. So let's hook the fuel back up, fill these up and see if they still leak. Fuel's on. Okay, we're still leaking back here. We're getting a little bit here, but I think it's just from this hose right here. I don't think anything else up here is leaking. So I do need to replace this hose down here. Now when you're replacing these, these are directional. So the one on the right is going to have a red tag on it. And the one for the left carb is going to have a green tag on it. The main difference is the way that this plastic piece here is clocked on there to hold it to the choke linkage. And if we look at the one that I just pulled out, there's no O-ring on it. So I need to make sure to get any old O-ring out of there and maybe there wasn't one in there at all and that's why it was leaking. Looks like there wasn't an O-ring at all. Okay, it's back together again. Let's turn on the fuel again. Looks like we've solved it, no leaks, except for our little leak right here. So now we have a good ignition system over there. We have carburetors that don't leak fuel, but our fuel right now is still being supplied by the fuel bottle. So the next thing we need is a working fuel pump. This wire is running straight from the battery. I'm gonna put this on this terminal and see if the fuel pump works at all. 
nothing. It is sparking, so we know it has a good ground. It just doesn't work anymore. This is a points type pump, so it's worth giving it a few taps, seeing if it starts. Nothing. Let's just take it off and replace it. I'll be replacing this pump with a new one. This is also a, looks like a points type pump, but it's actually been upgraded with electronics inside of it. So instead of points, it has transistors. And this is going to look like the proper type of pump that's sitting here, but there is nothing to maintain in here, no points to clean. It will always just work. So it's gonna be pretty simple. Just swap it in the clamp, hook the hoses up, and hook our power wire back up. All right, the new pump is hooked up, so I can disconnect this. I'm going to put some fuel into the pump. That way it's not dry when it turns on. Let's put some power to it and see if it works. Next, I'm going to be installing a fuel filter right in here. This I just picked up at Napa. And these are directional, so take a look at the way that the arrow is pointed, and it has to go in this way. So there we go. In theory, I should just be able to put fuel in the tank, and it should come out here now. I put a couple gallons in the tank now. One of the neat things about these cars is the fuel filler locks in the trunk. Let's run the pump, see if we get any fuel up here. Just to make it a little easier on the pump, I'm going to take this off right here. I think the floats might have closed these. It's hard to bleed the air out. I'm going to grab my pump and give it a little help. Let's undo this hose down here. There we go, we're starting to get some fuel. I don't know if you can see that right there. So it looks like this isn't flowing very easily from the tank. So I'm gonna take my blow gun with a rubber tip and blow air back through the fuel tank. I've already taken the fuel cap off. That's important so you don't blow the tank up by blowing air into it. And then hopefully this will clear out anything that might be sitting over the pickup in the tank. It did blow a bunch of fuel and junk back at me. Let's try to suck that out of there. I'm going to use this little piece of pipe to connect my fuel bottle up to the pump. That way we can see it work. Let's get the air blood out of it. Okay, looks like I did it backwards. Okay, I have these switched around now. I had these on a different way, and then for some reason I was looking at it and I switched them. Apparently, I should have kept it the first way I had it. Now let's turn the pump on.
there we go pump is working once i get the fuel tank working i'll reclock all this and get it the way i want it to be but for now the car can run off the fuel bottle that's going to be it for today if you want to see more videos on my innocenti spider or any of my other innocentis comment below and click subscribe so that you will see the next episode on this car